Well, welcome back to NRM 435 GIS Analysis. In this session, we're going to compute point density, or in other words, the number of points per unit area within polygons. So let's first create 100 points within the extent of our layer squares one meter. So we'll use the tool Create Random Points. And I'll output this as an output feature class, random points 100. And this time, we're not going to constrain it to put a random points within each polygon. We're going to put them constraint within the extent of our layer. So anywhere within the extent of the entire layer, which ranges from 0 0.5, negative 0.5, negative 0.5 in the lower left-hand corner, all the way up to 9.5, 9.5 in the upper right hand corner. And we'll put 100 random points randomly distributed throughout that extent. And then just OK. So the result is 100 random points within the extent of this layer. So the next question is for each square, what is the density of points within each square? So we'll run the spatial join tool to determine the number of points within each polygon. So our target is what we're interested in. So in this case, we're interested in our squares. And our join is how many points are there in every square. So that's our random points. And I'll name the output polygon squares join count. So then if we right mouse click open attribute table, for every square in this new layer, we've got a join count. So basically this first polygon, there were zero points sitting in it. Our next polygon, there's two points sitting in it. Our next polygon, there's zero points. Our next polygon, there's one point sitting in it. So if we sort descending, Here's the maximum number of points in a polygon. So then what we could do is we can calculate density by adding a field. And that will be double precision because it's going to be a quantity. And then we'll calculate density. So our density using the field calculator, right mouse click, is going to be equal to the join count divided by the area of the polygon. So that would work regardless of what the area of your polygons are. In this case, each polygon is an area of one meter by one meter. So it works out that the join count is our density. So here we have three points per square meter, five points per square meter. And we could symbolize our polygons by density. So if we go to properties, and then the Symbology tab, and then Quantities, we will symbolize based on density. And then we could go to Classify, and let's classify based on a defined interval. And the defined interval will be 1, and then just OK. So then here we have a density from 0 to 1, 1 1.1 1 to 2, etc and then right mouse click zoom to layer. So here is the polygon that has the highest density, which is a density of five points per square meter. And these polygons will make them white. They have the density of zero or one. So they have relatively low density. Let's create some proximity polygons for our 100 random points. So we can use a geoprocessing tool, create Thiessen polygons. And let's create a new layer of random points within the extent of our proximity polygons. So if I go to results, we can do create random points and the extent will be within our proximity polygons and let's do a thousand random points.
Okay, so then let's calculate the point density within each proximity polygon. So we can use a spatial join tool to get the count of how many random points are there inside each proximity polygon. And as a check for this polygon, there is no random point sitting in this polygon. And this polygon has 34 random points sitting in that polygon. So then we'll calculate density as a function of the join count divided by the shape area. So we'll add a field for density. And then density is going to be the join count per unit area. So in my example, the density ranged from zero points in one polygon all the way up to a maximum of uh, 23 po points per meter squared for the largest density. So what we can do is we'll symbolize this. Um, let's symbolize it with an interval of two. So right mouse click and go to properties and then symbology quantities for density and then we'll classify it using define interval of two. And then we could pick whatever color ramp. So here the cooler colors are the lower density, the hotter colors are the higher density. So then this polygon has a high density of points sitting in it. And this polygon has a relatively low number of points sitting in it. So in this session, each point represented a observation and the density was basically the count of the number of observations per unit area. In the next session, our points will represent quantities and what we want to do is interpolate a surface of these quantities.